Hi everyone, welcome back to Startup Talk. Uh, thank you so much for everyone who's joined us today to hear from our guest speaker, James, the CEO of Luxly Movement. I encourage you all to use the comment section to ask James any questions you may have live. I will be watching out for them. Uh, so Luxly Movement was launched in 2012, so about eight years ago, and has grown to be quite a successful company that it is today. Um, and I also know that the company has a very interesting story as to how it came to be, which uh, I would love for you to share with the audience members. Sure. Thank you, Jasmine. Th uh, thanks for having me on the show here. So, uh, yeah, to tell you about Luxley Movement, it is something uh, that started back in 2012. Uh, I was playing football before this in BC, and I've been traded to hometown Toronto. And at, at the time, I had a lovely girlfriend uh, who was from Brazil, and I was trying to woo her to come to Toronto with me. And when we got here, it was pretty cold. She was used to plus 30 temperatures, and we're touching minus 30 here. <laughs> and I knew if I wanted her to stay, is something that I had to get her used to. And of course, if you want to keep someone warm, you definitely need a nice winter jacket here in Toronto. And so um, one of the first things we did was going uh, winter jacket shopping. And I wanted one, something made in Canada, because we do it the best here uh, in Canada since we know the cold so well. But I also want something sustainable and animal free. Uh, I just grew up in a warm household, environmental household. We recycled, we composted. Uh, my mom used to take out spiders with a napkin outdoors. And so uh, I just wanted to make sure that there was no fur on this jacket. And so I went uh, shopping on Queen West uh, with my girlfriend. and. They just didn't really have that option, and I couldn't get down with the other options. And so I, uh, I went home and did a little research and found out that there's technical uh, fabrics, innovative fabrics available that outperformed the fur and down, and uh, it's actually used by the military. So I sourced a bunch of these, right. uh, you know, hit the pavement, uh, found the suppliers, went to manufacture in North Toronto and actually uh, made a sample jacket, that first sample jacket going to my girlfriend at the time. Mm -hmm. And it seemed to have worked out because she, uh, she roughed it out that winter in Toronto. She stuck nice. around town <laughs> and, uh, and we eventually got married. And so now she gets a new jacket every year and now we have three kids at home as well. So warm story to begin with and right. uh, we're, we're certainly in the business of keeping people warm. That's a powerful story. Um, so was entrepreneurship something that always interested you or was it only until this idea came up did you decide to go into the field? Yeah, I, I always loved uh, being an entrepreneur. Even when I was young, I didn't know I was being an entrepreneur, but I had these little hustle jobs that I do, uh, starting when I was a teenager, mowing people's lawns, setting up these services, putting the pamphlets, printing out the pamphlets, and putting it on all the neighbor's uh, mailbox there, and then in university, host, hosting these uh, parties at our place, and you know, charging admin, uh, uh, admission fees, and you know, I thought they were just little hustle projects at the time, but it was just the early beginnings of being an entrepreneur. Right. So you had the traits always in you. But yeah. Yeah. Especially, awesome. and as an athlete, as a pro athlete, I think it gave me a good base uh, to prepare me to be an entrepreneur because mm -hmm. um, it's it's such a it's such a competitive business uh, being an athlete. You know, there's, uh, there's transient workers and uh, in and out, you can be cut any day. And uh, it's just like business, uh, you know, what do they say, one out of 10 businesses uh, end up being a success. So yeah. there's a lot of transient businesses and it takes a lot to, to stick around. Gotcha, cool. Um, I also noticed that your background doesn't have a lot of like design and <laughs> retail actually in yeah. it. So how did you, uh, deal with that? How did you overcome that challenge of recruiting somebody who you can share your vision with exactly and create the product that you wanted? Yeah, for sure. It, it really takes like a village to create a brand yeah. and, and, uh, and bringing all these, all the right people aboard. And, uh, you know, we, we started off with this one vision that we could, uh, you know, align ourselves to. And uh, it's the whole why behind our brand is warmth. Right. Uh, warmth obviously keep, keeping people warm in our jackets, right. but, but also being warm beyond that, uh, encouraging people to be warm in their everyday life and, and uh, being warm to the planet and being warm to all people. So that's something we centered around the business around. And uh, this helped attract some people. And, and uh, you know, 
going back to my athletic career, recruiting was one of the things uh, that I excelled at. You know, when I was in university, we had a five-star uh, recruit that we wanted on the team. Right. We'd set them up with uh, me for the weekend, and you know, I'd show them a good time, and, and hopefully they joined the team. And then same thing goes with uh, with this this brand that we're building, and you know, meeting with people and and uh, you know, showing them the vision and and showing them to unleash their creative energies and, and their entrepreneurial spirit because it was a startup and we had to build this team with uh, entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurial minded people. Right, so do you have any advice for founders out there who might be uh, in a similar situation where they're trying to recruit the right people? Yeah, certainly. I think you got to get people that are aligned with your mission right. uh, rather than you know uh, a lot of these startups I see get early funding and, and you know, people may be attracted by some of the paychecks that they could provide, perhaps. But uh, you know, I think that's what really kept our our brand afloat during the early years is that people aligned so much with what we were trying to accomplish, and we're still trying to accomplish that, and, right. and that's what attracts more people. Very cool, awesome. Um, oh, we have a question from the audience. Yeah. Uh, so Terry asks. At what point did you know that your company would make it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, I I still uh, don't know. Yeah, I right. still go with that attitude. Uh, once you become content, I find that you're out the door. Like, uh, you know, I when I when I was playing football every day, I got to the locker room, uh, and I was always a bubble guy, so I didn't know that if I would stick on the team or they're gonna, you know, let me go. So. Every day when I uh, got in, driving into the office, when I got close, I get a little bit of anxiety over me because right. you get to the locker room and uh, you know you're not going to be part of the team anymore if your helmet's not there and the game plan is not there. So like every day I arrived, I you know look to see if my helmet was still there and my right. game plan was still there, and I'm like, yes, I made it another day. But um, so I kind of approach entrepreneurship the same way, so, right. and whereas. You know, the business night might not end tomorrow, but you know, if I don't do everything I gotta do today, then it might be six months from now where well I'm gonna see the road I'm gonna have to hit the road with this. <laughs> that's, well, that's a pretty honest answer. So yeah. Thank you for that question, Terry. Um, I wanna go back to the point that you mentioned that you, you manufacture in Canada and that's very important to you and you pretty much do everything. For your products in Canada, yes. from the design to the manufacturing. Yes. Um, so, why? What are some of the reasons as to yeah. why you chose to do this instead of uh, overseeing the manufacturing like your competitors or yeah. going a cheaper route? Yeah. No, that's a uh, great question. You know, I think uh, for one, it's just like the, the kind of the control aspect and the traceability, uh, being able to like visit our manufacturers like on a whim, like. Right. Uh, you know, we just we just give them a heads up. Hey, we're just going to drive over if they're here in Toronto and overlooking the the, uh, the production and, and the development. And you know, we're always like fine tuning each of our products. And so, it's each time if if it's if it's done in another country, sometimes there's communication gaps, there's right. time gaps, there's not being able to be in the same room and connect with people. So that's something super important to us. And then. Uh, Making a jacket here in Canada, we have a distinct advantage. And uh, of course, you know, living in a cold country and delivering a product that uh, it keeps people warm, that's one of the advantage. But there's a certain pride with our manufacturers um, with every product they deliver. It's, it's, it goes beyond the product. Their reputation is on the line, our reputation is on the line, and we want to build something special. Um, you know, I, I the other day I was going shopping. Uh, I was getting a, a toy for my kid, and I was looking to get um, a foosball table. And I went to the store. There was three options, and uh, there was, you know, there was a couple that were made out of country, and then there was one made in Italy. And the the one made in Italy for this foosball table, it had some special features, and you know, everything was just elevated a little bit. Right. And you know. It, it was the one that I want to get. I'm like, yeah, I gotta get this one when I'm ready to purchase this. And, and it's the same thing with our jackets. It's got these extra little touches, extra little warmth, extra little love, which really elevates it above the rest. Right, gotcha, very cool. Um, and like you mentioned, 
the you use recycled content yes. in your in your products. Um, your products are also vegan. Um, and you highlight the importance of treating your employees fairly, mm -hmm. as opposed to maybe how employees would be treated had you overseen the manufacturing. Um, so your your products go beyond solving just the problem of keeping Canadians warm, yeah. which is very, uh, it makes your brand very strong and it tells a very powerful story. Um, so my question to you is, how important are those comp those extra additional competencies to the success of your brand? And do you think that startups today need to go beyond just that core problem to be successful? Yeah, um, you know, I think for our particular brand, it's super important because, you know, again, going back to the warmth, yeah. it predicates all, all decisions we make. So it doesn't make my job too hard when we have to weigh out, uh, are we going to do A or B? Right. And for us, it's like 360 de uh, degree warmth. And so uh, we have to make sure everything directs to the why. Um, and so, of course, you know, going animal friendly, using these recycled, these biodegradable fabrics plays into what we're trying to create and we can't cut corners because when we start cutting corners then things unravel and right. you know we lose that authenticity. Lose that, a lot of trust too, yeah, right? Yeah and um, you know I think you know with, with startups you, you have to really discover what your why is and you know you have to take those extra steps um, whether it's a service industry investing in you know, more people to service it, or whatever it might be. Right. Um, you know, there's so many different businesses out there, but you know, you can't get away from your core. You have to, you have to figure out what's going to make you distinct in the market and really plug in and invest in that. Right. Very, very good advice. Um, we have another question from the audience. Yeah. Uh, how did you find your competition edge with your competitors? Yeah. Um, you know, I think. We, um, you know, in the early stages, we kind of, uh, you know, you do those comparison charts. What is this brand delivering? What is our brand delivering? And, uh, you know, where we see uh, some of our advantages is just, you know, we're, we're delivering a uh, product in a more sustainable uh, way. Uh, the Made in Canada comes with a quality, comes with a five-year warranty, uh, so we see an advantage there. Uh, for the, you know, uh, fa the fashion uh, portion, I, I think that that's kind of uh, something that everyone can decide on themselves, but right. that's something we're, we try to stay on the forefront of. We, we're always participating in fashion shows, and you know, our office is located right downtown in the creative uh, heart of Toronto here. Right. And, uh, and then lastly, uh, the the fabrics and the, the warmth that we deliver is something that we're right at the top with too. So, um, you know, these are some of the, the pillars that, that we've uh, created behind the brand. Right. And, um, you know, hopefully this resonates with the, the consumer here in the 2020s. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that question. Uh, another one from the audience from Christian. Yeah. Do you hire based on your company culture and values? Uh, if not, how do you instill the values into your new hires? Yeah, so, um, you know, I think that's another great question. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think there has to be some kind of vibe when you're bringing somebody in. Um, and, but we don't want everyone to be the same. Right. Um, you know, so there's, there's like a, I guess like a, a vegan component of our jackets. Uh, it's part of our warmth initiative. And there is a few, you know, people that identify themselves as vegan on the team, but there's also some non-vegans because we we want, you know, our brand we see is not just like um, a vegan brand, but it's a connector brand of, you know, whether uh, you're, you know, you're doing regular mainstream kind of practice eating practices or, you know, the the vegetarian eating practices, and we right. we wanted to get both those type of people, and. Um, and how do we instill the values in our team? And I, I think it's uh, creating a culture of accountability and, and uh, you know, so making sure as we onboard each person, they kind of know that whole why behind their brand and then also the, the, the amount of excellence that, that we want to deliver and, and with uh, each respective pillar in our organization. And it's just, um, I think the onboarding process uh, really make it clear to people during the interviews and then their first few days in with, with the expectations and, and uh, the whole, the whole um, 
you know, with us the warm, not only want a warm park with us, but want a warm culture, it's something that we can look forward to to come to work every day, so. Right, fantastic. Thank you so much for that question. Um, I also had the pleasure of watching one of your very humorous shorts. Yes. Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, Wexley posts a lot of these short videos that share knowledge and also help to promote the brand. Yeah. Many of which you are the star in. It's <laughs> very fun to watch. So Thank you. How and when did you decide to do that? What was the inspiration? Yeah, I guess, um, you know, just uh, doing collaborative projects with, uh, you know, some of my friends, uh, you know, some of the football guys, and, you know, I, I guess the, the brand's a bit of a reflection of myself, and, and you know, I've never really um, took, like, you know, don't take me too seriously all the time, and, right. and you know, sometimes I'll uh, put myself, uh, you know, I'll put myself uh, in a situation to make people laugh, because, yeah. You know, it's something I love to do, and so like if I had to, you know, do, you know, put myself in an awkward position or something, I would mind like doing that. And uh, you know, seem to be resonating with our consumers. And and uh, you know, when I look at the fashion industry, it's too, it's so like serious and stiff, and you know, looking perfect. And and we're not a perfect brand. And and you know, we we believe in positive energy, making people laugh. You know the winter's too cold, and if you take it too seriously in Canada, you won't get through it. Because like sometimes you step outside, and it's ridiculously cold, and, and you gotta find ways to stay warm. And, and laughter is one of the best ways. Amazing, I love that. <laughs> Very authentic. Uh, we have a question from the audience related to marketing as well. Uh, Catherine asks. I'm a founder of an early stage startup and I'm bootstrapping. Yeah. Branding uh, slash marketing is important, but it can be quite pricey. Do you have any advice? Yeah, um, you know, that's certainly. So yeah, the branding and marketing, uh, you have to definitely add up. Um, you know, I think you gotta be, you know, what doesn't cost money sometimes is creativity. And uh, you know, that comes from the mind. And so if you get some brilliant minds in the room, and uh, you know, there's always great ideas, but if you can if you can identify the ones that you can pull down and bring into action, that's something you got to do. Um, you know, bootstrap, bootstrap, and we've bootstrapped this business till now. Um, you know, I, I think it's about like taking uh, increased risks along the way, and so as you grow, you gotta you gotta you know take it a level each time. Don't don't just uh, you know blow the whole budget on this one high high level um, ad or or creative marketing piece you want to make, you know, start slowly and if you see it's work, okay, let's put some more money in this and, and build up that part of the business. Right. That's awesome. Thank you for your uh, fantastic answer. Thank um, you. Another question from the audience from Miriam. Did you consider taking VC or angel investment when you started? Yeah. When you targeted investors, did you target based on your company values or on another metric? Yeah. So, um, yeah, it wasn't really anything that we considered uh, at the beginning, just because we we wanted to find ourselves and we wanted to. Even if we took money that early, I wouldn't even you know retrospectively, I wouldn't know where we could uh, deliver those funds to to really amplify the brand the way we wanted to. Right. We wanted to uh, we wanted to grow our particular brand in in an authentic way and not have exterior pressures. Um, to, uh, to t tear us from our warmth vision. And so that's something w that we've continued uh, to stay with. And uh, the second half of that question, when you, so targeting investors based on company values, you know, I, I think that you certainly want to target uh, investors with similar values because one, they'll, they'll give you um, a better value on what your company is, but also they'll understand the growth and that you know, if, if you're very focused on a vision, then they they'll have to understand not to deter you. If it, if it's strictly um, an investment based on funds, there's going to be exterior pressure to, to get results right. in, in a timely fashion. Right. Thank you. Thank you for the question as well, Miriam. Uh, another question from the audience: uh, At the very beginning of your journey, what did you do to create a unique community and gain trust and interest from your future customers? Hmm. Great question. You know, I think that's um, that's something that you you want to focus in on when, especially when you're starting a brand. 
you will really want to be focused on who you want to uh, be in front of. And so, you know, for us, I think uh, it was it was building our community through uh, a mix of online and in person, uh, finding where these people went to, just really blanketing these events, right. uh, and and elevating elevating the service that each one of these early adopters got in the brand because when you're first starting out you're, you're ironing out a lot of things logistics quality and uh you know if one of these if if you fail them on one of these uh fronts you, you had to give them special privilege you, you know we had to we had to smother them with warmth uh with that and you know whether that's uh, if there was a quality issue, you know, making sure that we replaced their jack with a brand new one, or right. or fixing it up complimentary, and, and just um, really, you know, these guys spend a, uh, the work hard for their money in our jackets. It, it is a premium price, and so we really got to make sure that those people that believe in us continue to believe in us, so right. they can continue to echo our message to their friends and circles. Right, word of mouth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Key. Awesome. Um, and your brand is also stocked in about 21 locations, if I'm not uh, yeah. wrong, across Canada. So how did you get over that initial hump and acquire that first retailer? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I think uh, just going out there, sometimes, uh, you know, we're, we're working on the project, working on the project, and we always know we can make it better and better and better. But at some point, you gotta get out there and start knocking on some doors and and you know see it, start testing it out in the market. And you know it's good that uh, we we wanted to initially target like the mom and pop shops. Right. Uh, we could really tell the story. There's such a, a story behind our brand that that makes us different rather than just the product on the shelf uh, by itself. And so we wanted to partner with the truth tellers out there, the storytellers and uh, people that believed in, in what we're doing. A lot of these mom and pop shops really right. believed in the, the Canadian made and the warmth message and the, the sustainability was a, a good direction for them as well. Right, and most of your businesses, uh, even though you're in all these brick and mortar stores, most of your business is still in e-commerce, correct? Yeah, we have a good split between uh, the brick and mortar stores and, and, uh, and, and our direct consumer business. Right. You know, uh, if you're like me, I, I, I'm from the old school, so I like to go to my local boutique and you know, I like to get the advice of the people that, that are there and I trust the people that are there. To, right. But you know, uh, there's so many people ordering online and, and we deliver a great experience on that front with the custom boxing, the, the quick shipping, free, free shipping and returns. So uh, you know, we, we try to, however that our client wants to be reached, we try to be able to, to appease in that way. Are there any um, like key tactics that helped get you that traction to your website and, and achieve such yeah. so many sales? Yeah, I think it's just delivering a great experience where you know the people that got the jackets they're going on on their Instagram. There's you know it's not like we we got the Kim Kardashian be like hey go get a Wuxley jacket. It was right. like it was that uh, you know the Kimberly from you know uh, Ottawa that. We shipped a jacket to give them a great experience, give them a great product, and then they organically go on their Instagram and be like, "Hey, I got this jacket. Uh, it's not always a great jacket. These are the reasons why I got it. They're doing such a great job. Check them out." And then, right. you know, these kind of experience that we delivered uh, drove in the traffic to our website. And I noticed on your social media, you guys also reshare a lot of these experiences. Yeah. Um, how important do you think that is to? Yeah. to do that and to yeah. highlight some of your customer success stories. It's so important because you know we're we don't believe in influencers. It's, we believe in our community influencing us, and right. so uh, you know hearing some of the work messages that they're doing, some stuff they're doing in our community. Those are the people that we try to target, right. and and um, you know showing their their great experience with our jacket. I think those are the authentic experiences that yeah, people absolutely. really want to see online. That's very powerful. A uh, couple more questions from the audience. Uh, I enjoyed watching Wexley videos on YouTube as well, and as a CEO of a startup, I'm also thinking about making a YouTube promo video. Do you have any suggestions on how I can get started? Yeah, so I would say look at like uh, you know three or five videos that you really uh, like that might resonate with your brand, and you know 
what what was the narrative in, in that YouTube video? What what did they uh, what was the feeling they invoked? And and you know you just got to get on get a, a piece of paper, uh, you know write out what you want to deliver um, and how this will look like, and you know start start collecting a, a team that can help execute on this. But um, you know make sure that uh, that you're going towards a common vision and it's storyboarded of what of what you want to execute. And then right. when you have that on paper and, and you get like a, a round table of uh, creatives and idea thinkers, um, everyone can add those extra layers and those pieces to the to the ad that is going to make it so special. It doesn't necessarily have to be a big expense either, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. And again, you know, start off... Uh, you don't need the fancy, <laughs> yeah. large cameras and... Yeah, you don't, have to, you don't have to book a Hollywood studio to yeah. with, you know, keep it authentic and, and uh, you know, people, it resonates with people these days. Yeah, amazing. Um, another question for you is, I've noticed that you haven't been afraid to change the name of your product ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. over the course of the years. So yeah. you started off initially with Mammoth Outerwear. Yeah. And then after over time landed on Wuxley Movement. Yeah, certainly, uh, you know, that was... Uh, Solid call out. I'll, I'll give you that. So uh, yeah, so we launched it in 2015 under Mammoth. Right. And uh, you know, since the startup, I'll be frank and honest with this. Like you know, we got a uh, a legal letter like uh, shortly after we launched from from uh, a competitor in the space was a similar name. Right. And they, uh, I did some research, and they were doing about 300 million a uh, uh, year sales, and we did about 80,000 on our Kickstarter, and yeah. so. It didn't. Uh, I didn't want to get in this type of smoke in our in our early stages. And they say, you know, I met with like the lawyers, the trademark lawyers, and they they say like, look at your company like a boat. Uh, when you're small, you're just like a little kayak, and you can pivot, and it's not such a big deal. But yeah. when you get bigger and you're a juggernaut, and you have to pivot, it takes a while. And right. and even uh, so, we weren't protected on the trademark front. And uh, you see, even some of these. Um, you know, as developed brands, they're still not protected on trademark fronts, right. uh, and and so uh, something we decided to change. And then we went to Woolly, uh, and we still weren't protected. We found uh, no one sent us a letter, but uh, and it also seemed like we had wool in our product. So finally, we landed on Wuxley, and Wuxley is a name that we. We invented at a Woolly, put an X in the middle, it represents change, rep represents technology. And then also the movement represented what we wanted to do. We right. feel like we're, we're creating this, this movement of warmth, uh, you know, being, being warm in our practices, our business practices, being warm to people, being warm to the, to the planet. And so we, uh, we felt that it was suiting. Right. And so uh, we changed name, and it's been pretty seamless. Right. And I promised our consumer we'd only change our name two more times. <laughs> so we're good. So the reason I ask that is because I know a lot of founders are very, it's a big decision to make. And even after making that decision, they can sometimes doubt the name that yeah. they've chosen. Um, so did you, you say that it was seamless. So it wasn't difficult to tell your community, hey, we're no longer this, we're not yeah. this. Yeah, so, you know, there's always, uh, you know, a couple people that may uh, not like the change, but, you know, I think once you get used to it, it it's it's quite, we never even think back about it anyways. Right. It's like we've been, like, Wuxley since day one. And at the end of the day, the, the name's not going to make the brand. The yeah. brand's going to make the name. Right. You know, you, you, see, you see, like, a, a star player in sports, and, uh, you know, what was, you know, like, he looked like a superstar, like Wayne Gretzky. What was 90, 99 before Wayne Gretzky wore it? Right. And he wore it. Now, like, whenever someone wears uh, 99 in hockey, it's like, oh, that's Wayne Gretzky's number. <laughs> right. Fair. That's completely fair. Um, that's also really good advice and a great experience to share for anyone out there who is doubting their startup name. Yeah. Um, so a couple more questions from the audience. Uh, a question on influencers. So you mentioned that uh, you're not looking for influencers for promotion and you focus on community instead. So I wonder how have you been building your own communities, your own personal network? Yeah, um, I think that's just like getting, uh, 
getting out there, uh, you know, uh, getting out in the community quite a bit, uh, whether it's events, uh, you know, being just being active with, uh, in your everyday life, because you know, where, wherever we, wherever I go, I'm, I'm somehow carrying the brand in some way. People right. ask questions. I'm wearing our jackets, obviously, and uh, and then building that community is, um, you know, just just uh, following up on actions. You know, you go to an event and you meet people. Do you connect with them by email? Do you have another coffee with them? See how you can help each other. Uh, you know, going. In our early stages, we, we went to all the accelerator programs. We were in all the fashion incubators here in Toronto, and, and that helped like, uh, build the infrastructure of our, our community and, our, and you know, the business leaders we can reach out to, you know, whether there's, there's a, a legal um, thing coming up or an HR, there's people that I can reach out to and help us and guide us through those uh, type of early startup uh, challenges. Absolutely, that's a great answer. Uh, another question back to the, the videos. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> was your company video your first experience making one? Uh, no. My brother, watch my brother made us uh, help me make like the Kickstarter video. So I, I guess that was a first company video. Right. Uh, and we, had, we used to team up on uh, videos too. They're like quite embarrassing, so <laughs> don't look them up. <laughs> but uh, we used to do like. Um, you know, I, I was just kind of like a community person in sports, and so, you know, whether it was like, um, you know, you know, encouraging people, like fair play in sports and stuff, we used to make these these budget videos together, right. and so we had a good flow of like how uh, we'd execute on the videos, but, uh, so there was a little like, experience on that front, I could say, but like, I think everyone has experience making a video these days, whether you've ever, you know, when I was growing up, we didn't have that luxury of like going like this and seeing how you looked on camera. Like I, I didn't, I didn't know how I sound, uh, sounded until I was like 20 years old. I'm like, do I really sound like that? Right. I'm like, I'm so annoying. How do people even listen to me? So I'm, now I've gotten comfortable with it over the years. But you know, if if you ever done a selfie video, you've done a production before. Yeah, well, the the videos that you've got are are very humorous and, and entertaining to watch and a great way to share your knowledge as well right yeah without sounding dull <laughs> <laughs> um so thank you for that question um another question from Catherine: as a leader how do you manage disagreements and conflicts between team members Ooh, you're setting Big up question. the hard hitters today Thanks, Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> uh you know i think uh you know these are always gonna come up and you you, you kind of want kind of want there to be a little bit of uh, you right. know, disagreements within the organization but you you want to just keep it calm cool and collected is right. you know so you know if I see like a, a disagree a disagreement popping up in the office or something you know I'll, I'll try to like you know I guess that's just my nature if I saw like a fight on the streets I'm like, I'm like trying to break it up and stuff but I'll yeah. be like I'm like, I'll be like, guys, like, I love the passion you guys have. Like, I was going to say, it's a lot of passion. Yeah, I love the passion you guys have. You know, let's let's sit down and, you know, let's talk about it. And, you know, if, if someone's not living warm or something, we'll, we'll, like, joke with them. Like, hey, why are you not living warm? You gotta, you gotta live warm. That's our, right. that's our company mantra. And so, uh, so if, I, if we feel those negative vibes or something, like, we, we try to recenter ourselves with... Uh, with, with that, that warmth concept. Right. No, that's, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I've also noticed that you've started going global. So you're, you're selling your products globally now. Um, and you plan on pushing that expansion a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, are you afraid that if you do that, since the product and the brand are Canadian through and through, that yeah. you might lose some hearts uh, in, yeah. from the Canadians? Yeah, no, I, I, I don't think we're, we're stepping away from our uh, DNA because it's, it's a product that's always made here in Canada and we're always, you know, trying to be innovative right. with, uh, with the ways we can be warm, but we're just including more people in our community and, and just get delivering an offering to different countries that, that don't have that. And, and so, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, people, are, our community is happy to see that we're growing because they... They really believe in what we're doing, and 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 so they're they're inviting more people to be involved. So I think it's just you know adding more fuel to the fire that we're trying to build here. Wow, 
Okay, that's fair. And how challenging is it to to go global and to deal with the cost of shipping? Yeah, it's overseas? super challenging. You yeah. know, there's, there's uh, logistics is never perfect, right. and you know you gotta. We've got we've had to learn a lot of stuff uh, along the way, and right. and uh, you know how do we get better each year? We gotta evaluate, uh, face some of the brutal truths, and uh, but. We, uh, you know, it's something that we're we're continually continuing to develop within our business, and and we want to make sure that we can uh, stretch out those warm experiences as far as possible. Right, and we actually have a question from the audience regarding this. Um, how I wonder how you are benchmarking and positioning yourself against Canada Goose and other Canadian brands. Um, do do you see that you're a competitor to them, or is it just one Canadian brand consortium. Yeah, no, I think uh, you know, kudos to all these other brands, uh, what they've done to uh, you know pioneer Canada as like the, the pinnacle of jacket manufacturing in the world. Uh, I think that we're just delivering a different off offering. You know, we've certainly delivered that um, warm products to the world, but I think what our brand makes us unique is. We're offering what Canadians really are. Like, you know, we are warm people. We have warmth within our DNA. We say sorry all the time. Uh, you know, we're polite. And, you know, we we try to, like, wrap all this in each one of our product. And, and hopefully the warm vibes that go into each product uh, resonates with the end user back to the world. And that's what our whole live warm concept is about. Um, and so we think that what makes our... Uh, product unique and a brand unique is that we really do uh, deliver on 360 uh, degree warmth, whether it's being warm with people, being warm to the planet, uh, and that means using uh, peacefully leaving animals out of the equation, using recycled and biodegradable fabrics, and um, yeah, so, uh, you know, there is a point of difference. I, I don't I wouldn't say it's a consortium, but, uh, you know, there there is obviously a good presence of Canadian made brands in the world. Right, great answer. Uh, and a question regarding your past experiences. Yeah. Um, I wonder how did your football and sports background help you to become a better leader and entrepreneur? Yeah, great question. You know, I think it totally mold, molded me. And, you know, uh, each person has their, their own experience of what molded them. But right. uh, sports, you know, it. Uh, it's all about team, and so um, you know I get you know tons tons of sports experience. Played for you know still playing so right. thirty plus years of playing sports, and and you know just seeing all those great leaders that that I used to play with, and you know pulling certain traits from each one, and and, and try to try to deliver my form of leadership, and uh, it's it, it's super competitive sports too, and and you gotta be competitive. Uh, it's you know, I thought sports was the most competitive industry in the world, and then until I got to fashion, and <laughs> and so like, you know, like you gotta you gotta be able to slug it out and, and stay competitive. Like, you know, I'm always, you know, hey, what's this brand up to? Like, uh, you know, seeing what the other the opponents are doing, and right. and again, never never stay com content and, and complacent with what's going on. We we gotta get better every day. Every day we step into that office, cross the line, like. Absolutely. We gotta keep on improving. Or so, despite it being different industries, you were still able to yeah. transfer a lot of skill sets over. Yeah, That's yeah, it. and then you know, surround again, like surrounding us with uh, teammates that you know where where uh, I might be a little weaker with, they right. really pick up the slack and right. and, uh, and make us a leader on that front too. So surrounding my uh, surrounding myself with a team with a. Uh, bunch of other leaders as well. Right. So were you still playing football professionally even after you launched Wexley Movement? Yeah, so I I, uh, I did two seasons with it, uh, with uh, Wexley Movement. It was a tough decision. So we launched it in November 2015. Right. And, uh, you know, we did about 80K on Kickstarter. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. Nice little hobby while I'm playing football. And then tw uh, 2016, uh, you know, we tripled, we tripled our sales growth from 2015. And I'm like, oh, this brand really has a shot. And so right. I was, I was juggling uh, a football career. I think I had two kids at home at the time, and wow. uh, the fashion. And so, 
you know, I've, I found that I was kind of just being mediocre in all three, being a mediocre football player and uh, mediocre with the brand and, and same with uh, being, being uh, the dad because I was so spread out. And so uh, it was a tough decision uh, right. because, you know, I had this nice cushy job as a football player that I'd known uh, was paying me decent for the time. And I basically had to have a conversation with my wife like, hey, uh, you know, I know... You know, the football has been doing well, but uh, I might have to drop this now. This was at the end of 2016. And by the way, I might not get a paycheck for like two years. And and uh, so I really just had to dive into it. And so that was one of the tough decisions. But, you know, I'm happy I made the decision because uh, football played such a great vehicle to get me into the, the leadership position with this company. But right. um, it was time to take the next step. Yeah, you can't split your time so much anymore. Yeah, certainly. You want to be completely focused. Absolutely. Uh, we got a lot more questions from the audience. Awesome. Um, so, I'm not planning to join any accelerators. Is that a must? Uh, you know, it's not. There's so many companies that made without an accelerator. Like right. Everyone's going to have a different journey. But um, you know, being a bootstrap brand, like we're we're looking always on the lookout for those free opportunities to build that infrastructure uh, within our company. And the accelerators help that and uh, help us build our community. Right. And you know, for me, uh, this was like my first taste of entrepreneurship, like real taste of entrepreneurship. And I, you know, I come from like a blue collar family, so there's really so much I needed to learn, and so right. that's why it really helped me on on uh, my journey, but you know, if, if you go without it, then yeah, you should. So not necessarily. Yeah. Cool. Uh, another question is, how do you handle rejection or being told that you're going down the wrong path? How do you stay true to your vision? Yeah. Are there a lot of moments where you, where people made you doubt yourself? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, sometimes, yeah, you certainly have to, like, it's part of the process. It's like, right. You know, uh, if you don't put yourself out there, then uh, there's going to be some rejections on the way, and, and you know, you gotta you gotta take some notes. Don't let it weigh you down too much, but take right. some notes from each each one of those comments. Uh, you know, if I go into a store and they didn't want to pick us up a couple of years ago, I'll be like, uh, uh, you know, thanks thanks for um, allowing me to introduce the brand. Can you provide any feedback of, of what we can improve on to get into your store next year? Right. And you know, I take in all these notes. And you know that helps build our plan for the next year. Like you know what we what we have to elevate to to get to the next level. Absolutely, that's that's a good way of taking judgment is just take it yeah. as feedback yeah, instead yeah. of rejection. Yeah, turn it around into positivity. And yes. Put you into action. Absolutely. Um, how? Oh, sorry. That's what we just asked. If you were building Wexley, what would you be doing? Oh. That's a good question. Yeah, um, you know, I, I haven't really thought about it, but, um, you know, I, I just love sports, so something maybe tied in with sports, uh, you know, I, I have teaching in my blood, so, you know, something maybe, uh, some, some type of coach or being connected with football still, right. but, you know, both of them were my passions, but, uh, you know, sports is my passion now, now business and, and fashion is become my passion, so. Right. Uh, I like this question. What drives you to keep going and hustling every day, especially being in a startup? You make your own hours, right? Yeah. So what gets you? Uh, how do you define your hours? How do you get up and, and stay motivated all the time? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, just, I, I, I guess, just having, setting these incremental goals along the way. Um, you know whether it's a weekly goal or monthly or yearly and and beyond and and you know if you you got to set up, set up those long term goals and work towards them and chip away each year but you have to also um, celebrate the little wins that happen right. in the week and and you know so I I uh, you know I try to put obviously like the nine to five is like the bare minimum but uh, that gives me my core and then. You know, am I getting to the office a couple hours early? Um, what am I doing in the evening time? Right. And and just building it out from there, and, and really just you know filling in that schedule and and making sure that I am uh, attacking all cylinders as much as I can with a little bit of balance. Where 
you know, I'll go coach my, my son's hockey teams and, you know, have to spend some time with my wife and, and uh, you know, take, you know, carve out a good block on the weekend so right. you can recharge your body and your soul to get ready to do it all Maintain over again. Maintain that balance. Yeah. Absolutely. Would you also say that having a uh, team members also attributes to that motivation because yeah. now you have people that are, you know, looking at you as a leader and you're accountable yeah. for them. Yeah, certainly. Like, uh, you know, when I played on the team, like, that's what motivated me. I always played for, like, the respect of my teammates and didn't want to ever let anyone down. Right. And so, yeah, it's the same thing with this. I, I really want to be at the top of my game or whatever I'm driving in the business. And so they can, you know, uh, be the top or be at the top of their game and then right. also respect me as a leader as I respect them. Absolutely, that's great. Uh, another question from the audience. Uh, Christian asks, what informed your timing for entering the market? Uh, you know, I, I guess we were kind of iterating, iterating and you know, I remember getting frustrated because we weren't entering the market after like a year, year or two of, but it, it takes so long to uh, develop a great product, great product, and then, you know, finally, uh, we're like, okay, hey, the winter coming goes every year, and we probably won't sell too much of these in the summer. Right. So, we're like, uh, I think in that in September of, of 2015, when we had kind of been uh, iterating the project for about two years, we're like, okay, let's launch this through a Kickstarter and, and, and see how it goes right. and, and see if we have something. And, and uh, you know, luckily it took when we put it up there. Wow. And uh, so it was a good time. Awesome. Uh, so let's just have a quick look at some of the polls that went on during our conversation. Yeah. Um, so one of them is, are you Canadian or Canada Goose client? Sixty <laughs> percent say no, yeah. uh, and seventy-one percent that are, said that they're not currently a Wexley customer, but they're thinking about it. Okay, well, so that's, I guess that's interesting. Motivated. <laughs> so, so with the with the uh, you know, if you have another uh, winter jacket, what you can do if you and you are interested in ours, we have a trade up program. Right. So. If you uh, if you bring it into us, we offer a credit up, up to two seventy five off one of our jackets, and we uh, take the donated jacket. We have six homeless shelters across right. Canada that we partner with, and they'll make sure it's getting on a, a, a homeless person on the street that can use the jacket. Right. And as for the fur, uh, we donate to animal animal sanctuaries uh, right. across Ontario, and uh, apparently, like the baby raccoons and monkeys, like to play with it. Wow. And, uh, you know. Interesting. I never yeah. knew that. Yeah, so. so no waste whatsoever. Yeah. So we'll make them out <laughs> That's awesome. Bit. Yeah. Um, which one do you think is the most challenging? So 85% said building the right product. Uh, the other options were hiring, recruiting, and other. Would you agree with that? Uh, yeah. You know, um. Uh, yeah, they all fall into each other because you need the right team to build the right product, and then yeah. So you know, I'd say an even split across. Fair. Um, so uh, from our audience, um, who was brought here today for what reason? So we got fifty percent say that they like entrepreneurship stories. You, of course, have a very interesting one. Twelve percent aspire to be an entrepreneur themselves. Twelve uh, percent are looking for investment opportunities. Twenty-five percent others. Very interesting. That's cheap. Yeah. And then we've got 37% say they uh, have a company of their own, so I'm sure they took a lot of great advice from you today. 12% uh, yes, they're exploring ideas. 25% uh, no, but they're interested. And then 25% others. All That's right. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much to our audience members for uh, participating in the polls and letting us know. Hopefully you took a lot of information from James' fantastic journey and experiences growing this company. Um, I, there's one more question, so I'm going to yeah, ask sure. it, and then we're going to end the conversation today. Uh, so I like the fact that you care about the social impact of what you do. Do you have any advice for other founders out there? Yeah, um, you know, get in, you know, get, make sure whatever you're getting into, uh, you're passionate about. Right. Uh, you know, obviously, with any business, so there's, there's going to be uh, there's going to be a money thing that's motivating you, the the, the whole the, the whole finance behind the business. But if you can layer it out with some kind of social impact as well, 
so there's an extra motivation. Uh, you know, you'll find yourself more motivated to do the project, and you'll, it'll attract others to be involved in the project as well. So, right. you know, whenever you can layer on some more motivation, I think it's great. Great, great answers all throughout the talk. Thank you so much, James, for being here today. Yeah, we have all the audience members. Thank you, Jasmine. Thank you yeah, so thanks much. for allowing me to introduce the brand and myself and, and yeah, and uh, the whole team. Thank you. Great.